Good evening. Um, my name is Lou, um, and some of you call me Luigi, and that's um, that's also cool. And I've been asked to talk about um, the holy relationship and the holy companionship, and what is the difference between the two. Um, as you all know, my teachings come directly out of uh, A Course in Miracles. Um, I follow the teachings of Jesus, the man who became the Christ, in other words, the physical embodiment of God's unconditional love on earth. Jesus was the first to fully realize the I am, the I amness, the fact that he is, as we all are, the Holy Son of God, and that he is the first um, in our awareness mind to fully realize the God self and therefore become the embodiment of unconditional love on earth through his demonstration of his unconditionality, the fact that he put aside the body, in other words, realized, fully realized that he is not a body and in the full realization that you are not a body, the fear of death goes in the realization that the I am, which is the awareness of the self, the, the complete awakening of the sun, um, he realized that this physical realm is just a temporal place or plane or state of mind that we experience as we proceed on our way to the realization that we are in God, the omnipresent, omniscient, omnificent, omnipotent, all-encompassing energy that sustains the world in unconditional love and that we have never left, not as in the dualistic teachings, us, you know, and God. God created us and put us in some place to, to worship him or to behave in a certain way or else we would not let enter the kingdom and that a being, a fallen angel, called Satan or Lucifer would then tempt God's creation and God and Lucifer would have this game where they would you know, see who was worthy of entering the kingdom and the rest would be damned to a life in hell eternal. You know, uh, And that really just came from Dante's thinking, Dante's Inferno, the, the idea of a place where we go to and suffer. And as in the, the good Christian book, um, the Bible, we speak of um, purgatory, an in-between place where we go and and um, and suffer the 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 retribution of our sinful way. Well, you know, let's ask the question: If you have a dream, and in the dream you you did something sinful, when you awaken uh, that morning from that terrible nightmare where you were a sinner, committing a crime uh, against humanity. And you wake up and it was just a dream. Would you be punished? Would you go to jail for it? No, you wouldn't because it was a dream. And in that same way, in God's mind or God's awareness, if I could personify that for a moment, God is simply aware that his son is dreaming a dream of separation. The son simply asked a question of what would it be like if it wasn't always bliss. And in that moment, due to free will, um, dreamt up this elaborate illusion called the universe and is now caught up in this um, cycle of, of incarnating from the physical to the to the non-physical, the spirit realm, the spirit world realm where he, he is less dualistic but still an entity, still a separate entity and then projects himself back into the dualistic world through the birth process. Um, projecting himself into the physical realm uh, where he experiences himself as a separate being, a separate entity separated from every other entity out there. There's the world out there. And, and yet within our own thought system, our own what we call a collection of thoughts, our mind, our fallen mind, egoic fallen mind, uh, or the, the fallen satanic mind, he has this dream of separation and separation is built from an idea of identity, separateness. So from separateness comes judgment. From judgment comes 
um, suffering and the idea of sin. And yet, all of this is just dreamt up. And so, the voice for God um, that that ex that is within each and every single one of us, that calling, that that from a young age, uh, to those of us that are experiencing some form of awakening or what we call a spiritual revolution, the realization that I'm different. The ego will immediately take that and say, I'm special, I'm different and I'm special. And I look for uniquenesses and I look for groups that are similar. And from that group consciousness, I'm now different and separate and we find ourselves spiritual. And religion has aided the ego so much in this because religion bandies together with all the right intentions in following their, their deity, um, their God, and then project outwards into the world and hold everybody else at random for being different or not believing in the same thing. And, and the ego thrives on that. Ego will use anything it can, including spirituality, to, to propagate its identity of the separate self, that it is a separate identity, a separate entity um, living in this realm of separation where life is is mostly suffering with small periods of, of joy and, and, and fun and laughter that make us hang into and look forward to the next one and we romanticize and we see our parents and we romanticize this world and and we we're compelled by an innate inner attraction towards a polar opposite opposite self um, which, which brings about the attraction, the sexual attraction, the desire, the lust. And yet um, the Bible um, and, and, and many other wonderful books talk about, you know, um, beware of, 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 the, of, the, of the sins of the flesh, meaning the desires of the flesh. The Bible in, in John, um, John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, uh, it very specifically states, do not fall in love with the world. Do not love this world, because if you love this world and everything in it, and you derive pleasure and, 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 and gain from this world, you, you do not see God here, because this is the world of flesh and physicality and, and the lower vibrational frequency of matter, physical matter, where God is not seen. And what we then do, because we cannot see God, and there is a calling within us, there's a sensation, a sense to it. Before you know it, ego has taken that, projected it outwards, and we then objectify the idea of God, an entity, or we have a circumstantial objectification. In other words, a situation in which we objectify, or even further, we go objective circumstance where we once had a, as the Course speaks about, Course of Miracles speaks about a holy instant, or that Holy Spirit encounter where we lifted, elated through the the anointment of spirit travels within us inside and we have become aware of spirit for the first time uh, many a reborn christian those that call themselves reborn in, in the anointed way have had that experience where they're lifted out of that that ego separate identity and they make that connection with holy spirit and they are reborn reborn into a new way of seeing that world and through the the anointment of the christ which the the our great teacher Jesus has become a great symbol for us to follow, um, and as he says, we're all brothers and sisters, and what I can do, you can do, and greater things than I have done, you shall do. What he was trying to show us is that if we followed his gospel, his teaching, not followed him, followed his teaching, followed his ways, lived um, in the way that he set example. That's how we free ourselves to. A mental conscious state of non-judgment and when we're ready for that God's grace comes upon us and we're then step into that higher awareness self the observer the I am that I am he was asked uh, by the Romans and Pontius Pilate um, are you the son of God and his answer was so beautiful and so simple and he simply stated I am that I am I am the awareness that I am and uh, you can call me what you want to and was willing to not sacrifice. He never sacrificed. Because sacrifice is to give up something that you desire and love. He, he was more than prepared to willingly give up the body in order to demonstrate that the, we are not the body. He's not the body. And that in his full awareness that 
him and the Father were one. Where he is, the Father is, and where the Father is, he is. He was able to demonstrate beautifully, three days later, the resurrection. But that wasn't enough, because he knew that at some stage people would realize the process of it. And there had been many a saint in India, Tibet, Ladakh. Uh, and I myself, through my own physical experience, and those of you that know and have the proof of my my resurrection, you know, 28 minutes after I was clinically dead, um, no brain activity, uh, all organs had stopped. And 28 minutes later, I woke up in the morgue. So resurrection wasn't the purpose, wasn't enough. He then physically demonstrated the ascension where he physically dissolved in front of his disciples the physical body and ascended, of course, we call it heaven, but he was already in that conscious heavenly state. Now, the important thing to know about those, this is that the dream is collective one mind dream. So Jesus has not left the dream. Jesus the Christ has not left the dream. He has now permeated the entire dream. And all of those who are ready for that lesson, ready for that awareness and understanding, he's now consciously available to all of us. So he's the first dream character to awaken and realize he is dreaming. And now that he's consciously aware of it, and we are become consciously aware of it as, as we choose to converse with the non-dual Jesus, the, the Christ within us, brought through, through into us through the conversation, through the anointment of Holy Spirit. In other words, the, the anointment that we have asked for as we choose to follow um, our way home, that, that calls from within all of us. And that is called the Holy Spirit relationship. It is our relationship with the Holy Spirit within us. Do not project Holy Spirit outside us as some entity or spirit. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God in us that we allow to become we allow ourselves to become presently conscious of. And we become as Course in Miracles students teachers for God. So we allow the voice to come into us. And we now become living examples of Conscious living, conscious observation, non-judgment, forgiveness is the first step because what we give to all, we give to ourself, to our self, capital S, the awakened self. So they're all my brothers and sisters. The whole world is just a, is merely an outer projection of an inner state of mind. And as I choose to see with vision, the Christ vision, um, I start to see the face of Christ, the face of love and everything I look upon. And I have no judgment or preference towards anything. I simply have the, the deep inner connection and love for everything I look upon. And so a holy relationship is a personal relationship that each of us, firstly as separate selves and then further down the line as connected Selves that have the atonement at one mint with God, the realization that we are all one brother and brothers and sisters, all one collective son of God, dreaming a dream where we're dreaming we're separated from God, never having left because we cannot leave that which is all encompassing, that which has no opposite, and 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 that is the 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 true relationship that we seek. We seek first the kingdom of heaven within us, within the tabernacle, within the, the, the altar being the center of our being, the center of our heart, the heart, not a physical thing, not a physical organ, um, symbolically as I'm, you know, pressing my fingers upon my chest and pointing towards the center of myself, that being my heart, the, the center of the self, the center of my essence, the being, the heart becomes the tabernacle and the altar upon which I lay the Christ within myself, the Holy Spirit, the home. And my body is not the temple. My body is simply a device which I have projected. The temple is that which hosts, which is host to Holy Spirit, the and and the Christ within me. You know, and as I I I I ask and I, I have the invitation saying, Lord God of my being, Holy Spirit, and and Christ, anointed love, personification of God on this earth, enter into my being and be you my shepherd, lead the way. 
And even if I walk through the valley of darkness, I shall fear no evil because you are always with me, always taking care of me and, and always there to guide me. And then we, and then the, the, the next question is, what about holy companions? Well, a holy companion, um, first and foremost, in every aspect, when I start to see the world as unified, the atonement has taken place um, at one mint, the, the unification, we're all one in God, then anyone I encounter is a holy companion. It could be the, you know, the, the, my children, or if I don't have children, the kid I bump into a mall on the skateboard and, and, he, and he reminds me of my, my youth and he makes me smile and he brings me a moment of stillness. Or the person I bump into at the mall and, um, and gives me some advice on, on what grocery to buy. And, and, uh, or the person I jump into the lift and just smiles at me for a second when I was really feeling down. Or someone who gives you a compliment and just lifts you up or the guy in the traffic that that slows down and lets you lets you in because you're trying to turn um, or a friend that that picks up the phone and knows that we're in lockdown and knows that you're alone at home and and phones and says how are you and um, are you okay and, and I can't visit but I, I'm with you in spirit or the person that comes to visit you when when you're ill or your spouse who you know cooks you a meal and, and with all love, with all her love or his love and waits for you to come home and, and asks you about your day. So it could be anyone. A holy companion is everyone, every single soul on this planet that is, that is in physical form, um, that we choose to look upon with the vision of Christ, the vision of love, um, that is holy companion. Um, and from a romantic holy companion point of view, um, uh, Ram Das uh, wrote a book, and I, I, I mentioned the book, but I haven't read it because just reading the title was enough for me. And the title is "Walking Each Other Home," and and that is the what used to be the separate identity, special relationship, you and me against the world, the girl of my dream, the boy of my dream, or whatever it was, you know, the person that I would imagine would be. Uh, worthy of me or I would be worthy of them and the world would admire us or see us in a certain way. Um, that romanticized special relationship which was all about what can I get, you know, um, and of course the other person is what can I give and there's a romantic period and we can see no wrong and then we settle into a, into a routine and before you know it, the masks come down. You know, Jim Carrey plays that role so beautifully in that movie which is such a beautiful analogy of what happens in this world. So he puts the mask on, and before you know it, the mask has completely possessed him. Demonic possession of the mask. A lower conscious ego. The ego becomes that separate identity. And at some stage, he's able to control it, take the mask off, and he knows that he's not the mask. But he can at some stage, if he chooses, put the mask back on, because the world's not ready to see the face, to see the face of Christ. So he'll pretend for a while to still play with the mask as he interacts with his holy companions. But at some stage, even that, he realizes, I need to do nothing but just be the conscious awareness that holds love in place. And, and because I'm not a body, I fear no death. And I, I'm able to put this body down and move simply into consciousness and, and, and spread the consciousness as a disciple of, of the living Christ with all my brothers and sisters. And um, and so be it. And if you so choose to have that companion, maybe a live-in companion or a lover that you see from time to time, um, uh, that that when you both set the intention that that you're there to walk each other home, um, I'll read you from from chapter 17 in the Course in Miracles, um, section five, the healed relationship, um, section 11. And this is so important to know whether you're in a marriage with someone and you may be struggling with something or you two may be you've lost the spark and or you've met someone um, and you know a true holy companion the most important thing is that both of you are facing in the same direction as I often say God is a direction so you've chosen to both look towards God and not look towards each other for fulfillment. This is not Jerry Maguire where you complete me, two halves trying to become whole. 
by feeling completed by the other. This is a complete being, not separate in its awareness anymore. And I choose to walk you home. And I ask that you walk me home, meaning that keep me on the path and I'll keep you on the path. And I would love it to be effortless and I'd love it to be easy. But if we're going to be true companions, we're going to keep each other sharp. We're going to keep each other in tune and attuned to walking the path. And should it, any of us at any given stage choose to stop, but we want to go no further, we've chosen to continue. We've kept our eyes on the horizon, and, and, if, we, and if we part ways, we don't part the path. We we're still continue down the path. And um, we don't go looking for a holy companion. We simply set our intention. God knows what we need. And when we're ready, that companion will come our way. And that companion, uh, which is going to keep us sharp and, and, and keep challenging us, um, is going to make sure that we, we stay on path. And we're going to make sure they stay on path. And we're going to help each other out as we walk each other home. And and course is very, very clear on this, is that uh, it says... You undertook together to invite the Holy Spirit into your relationship. I'll read this again. So regardless of whether you're a Christian or a Buddhist or a Taoist, non-denominational, you know, whether you study the I Ching, the Vendantas, the Course in Miracles, or you, you, you're a fundamentalist Christian, you know, take the term Holy Spirit and just imagine that as the spirit of your divine you know, God, your, your, whatever you want to call God, you undertook together to invite the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, into your relationship. He could not have entered otherwise. Although you may have made many mistakes since then, you, all, you have also made enormous efforts to help him do his work. And he has not been lacking in appreciation for all you have done for him, nor does he see the mistakes at all. You have been similarly grateful. Have you been similarly grateful to your brother? Have you consistently appreciated good efforts and overlooked the mistakes? Or has your appreciation flickered and grown dim in what seemed to be the light of his or her mistakes? So be forgiving. Remember, the first principle of A Course in Miracles, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Forgiveness, as you give, you receive. And forgiveness is not really because I'm right and I forgive you from a vantage point because of I'm better and I know better. But simply, I forgive you because we're both dreaming. And no matter what we dream up, it's not real. And therefore, there is actually nothing to forgive but everything to love. And so the holy companionship can be a most beautiful relationship between two children of God walking each other home. And I, I, I don't romanticize it, but I'm not saying it couldn't be a most beautiful and in the traditional way romantic relationship where you have two people that look to serve God and each other. And they, they see the face of Christ upon each other and they get up in the morning and, and they want to serve one another. Not at their own expense, but from a place of love, unconditional love towards each other. Each other. So I wish upon all those children of God that are walking, walking, in, the right, walking in the direction home that you meet um, a holy companion, that you have someone to hold your hand when you walk each other home. And I, I send you blessings in these times of isolation. Make use of this time to really go deep within. Go to that gentle, quiet self, that, that silence, that stillness, which is not about noise or, or um, physical silence, but that inner silence that you know that when you, when you reach that, that holy instant, that moment when you connect fully, Full willingness, you let go and surrender. Let spirit lead the way. That that you be anointed with, with the Holy Spirit, and that that the voice for God lead you home. And that 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 your your God make Himself known through your life to you and all your brothers and sisters. That you walk yourself home 
with a joyous companion and that you never forget that this is but a momentary lap in, in, in reason, a tiny moment in, in time where the Son of God forgot not to laugh. And, um, and that pretty soon this too shall pass and that we'll find ourselves in heaven once again, atoned as one. Brothers and sisters in God, in Christ, send you my blessing, send you my love. Know that I am with you. Know that God is with you, that Christ is with you, that the Holy Spirit is in you. Blessings and have a most blessed day or evening ahead. Amen. So be it.